Hey, Ren. Oop, good, okay. Unmuted and uh, visible. <laughs> Great. I'm gonna make you um, co-host. Co-host. How was your day? Uh, pretty quiet. I just, you know, fooled around with a lot of stuff. I did drive down to uh, uh, the Shrine Auditorium. I'm a board member at what's called the Grace DeMay Museum down there. And, uh, so I met with the uh, director and one of the staff people, but we were distanced, <laughs> all in masks. Yeah. But other than that, I've been home a lot. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Have you done anything, uh, any small home improvements recently since you've been home so much? Uh, well, the only thing is uh, we bought a, uh, another filing cabinet. Okay. The clue. <laughs> yeah, Joanne and I sort of stuff piling up all around on our desks. So we decided to get one more. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. You have, do, you, do you still have a lot of paper stuff? Oh yeah, you know, I'm, I'm of that generation, you know, it's so hard for me not to print everything out after it goes up on a screen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Did you get a chance to read the, uh, the motion and the substitute? Yeah, I have both. I have, uh, I have both. Yeah. Good. What do you I, listen what to I, the whole city? Do you listen to the whole city council meeting? Uh, I typically don't, or I, I have it on sort of in the background. There's just a lot of uh, stuff. You have to be careful um, when you're listening because it it'll go. It'll it'll sound all kind of you know pro forma, and then suddenly it's <laughs> you know, they're, they're voting on something and you go, wait, what are they doing? Which, which motion is that? Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Robin. Hello. How are you? Good. Good. We're at it again. Oh yeah. <laughs> Night well, three for me. <laughs> I'm hoping we can go fairly quickly on this. Um, yeah. Well, it, it, it depends on who attends, Ren. <laughs> I know. Well, we've got two minutes for uh, public comment so all right i will explain that at the beginning so hopefully people will you know if they want to say something but basically the first question is you know do we want to do a cis if we say no you know end of conversation and we don't have our meeting on monday yeah. uh, i assume we're going to want to do a cis and going yeah through, do we support one or the other and yeah then, yeah you know, it's so funny. I, I went up to Target. Um, I got off the freeway at Vineland and I shot straight up and I saw the tents, you know, under the freeway and around the freeway. And, you know, it's like if I was going to live in a tent, I would want an ocean or a stream or trees. I mean, I, there's got to be some place for people to live without having to live under a freeway. You know, it just that we have wonderful, uh, what is it, uh, camping sites. And, but, you know, at Target, I saw these campers in the parking lot. I mean, things have really changed. People are living in their vehicles. People are living in very different ways. Yeah. And uh, part of it is because they have to, and, and uh, some of the articles are be to be why some people are doing it because they can. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, you know, on uh, TikTok and Facebook and Instagram, there's all these young kids that have basically, young couples that have bought a van and they're living in their van and they're showing you how they've like made it a whole lifestyle and how they've turned it into this really kind of cool. Um, Hi, Hannah. <laughs> this really cool kind of lifestyle. I don't know. It's kind of a thing now. How are you? 
Hey, Anna. Hi, I'm good. I'm just, you know, finishing up work and jumping straight on here and <laughs> I'm a little tired, but, uh, but this is important. So I wanted to be here. Yeah, thank you. I think um, I'm going to try and move it fairly quickly here. Good. Uh, you know, it's, a, it's an important topic, but I think <clears throat> what we have to discuss tonight is, uh, is be specific. So I think we can get to it. And, and uh, especially if there's consensus around what we want to do, I, it's going to be pretty quick. Um, we've got uh, obviously other people in the audience. Um, so we'll, uh, uh, Jason, they can hear me, right? Yeah. And, and so what, and I'll, I can, sh um, and I can either share the agenda or you can share the agenda. And, and since it's just a single item agenda, we can, we can still go through, uh, start with public comment and then go through, uh, that single item agenda. Okay. Yeah. If you would share the agenda, that'd be helpful. Yeah. Let me see. Oh, I think Bob is here. Yep. Gotcha, Bob. We're waiting for Colby. I think we're waiting for uh, Colby and Kelly. If Kelly, uh, I think Kelly's joining us as well. I think. Yeah. Hey, Bob. Happy Hi, guys. Hello. How are you? I'm good. As, as can good. be expected. Let me get some light here. <laughs> you don't yeah. want to sit in the dark? <laughs> I see. Well, you know, it's, 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 not, it's a great computer, but <laughs> the camera apparently is terrible. <laughs> my seat is like great during the day because I have my window right in front of me. So I get like great uh, light. But yes. then at night, the light is coming from behind and my glasses reflect the screen back so nobody mm -hmm. can see my eyes. <laughs> but during the day, it works great. Yeah, but your teeth look white. They look beautiful. <laughs> white skirts. That's all that counts, right, Robin? That's, that's right. It's all how we look. As long as how many of you are wearing pajamas on the bottom? Just want to know. I mean, I'm wearing a sweatshirt on the top. <laughs> <laughs> We took the dog for a walk and I was like, I'm going for the sweatshirt and I'm probably not uh, <laughs> I'm glad we're doing this. Yeah. Me too. Yeah, we we used to have have an ad hoc for this and it kind of I don't know if it fizzled out or we just got you know ran out of steam. What happened, Ren? Oh, it got uh, moved over to the uh, uh, governmental affairs committee. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, but it seems to be taking up too much time in our governmental affairs, right? Uh, not necessarily, but it, I think uh, this particular item kind of popped up quickly and uh, uh, we've been asked by several people to, you know, to take a position on it. So we'll see if we want to do that. Okay. Well, going forward, Ren, as I mentioned, it cuts across several committees, but but you'll be the point person then, and we'll we'll let you, you know, update us at very at the board meetings. Yeah. Okay. I, was, we'll uh, I, I have been and continue to be the uh, uh, designated person uh, as the liaison to the city's uh, homeless uh, perfect programs, and that was primarily because the meetings were downtown, and I could just walk over there to the meetings. Um, but, uh, of course everything is online now. And, uh, well, when I brought it up at the board meeting, I wasn't aware that you were going to talk about it as well. So I called you and apologize. I'll do it again. No, that's, yeah, that's, that's okay. It, uh, I don't want to step on your toes. So. Better, better to have it covered twice than not at all. Read. <laughs> well, I mean, if, I hope you're going to follow up with this pallet housing. 
because that's right in our neighborhood in North Hollywood. And that's an experiment that I'd love to see follow up on it. Yeah. That, that should, I wouldn't want to go into that neighborhood council meeting. That is going to be raucous. I, I know some folks over there, so I've been checking in with them to see. <laughs> oh, God, I, I can't imagine. How they're going to, you know, it's going to be wild. Have anybody been to a, a Van Nuys neighborhood council meeting? Um, no. They're, they're You're smiling, so it must be fun. <laughs> I mean, yeah. They... Well, I know, I know Sherman Oaks is very rambunctious. Yeah, Sherman Oaks as well. Studio City has its fair share of characters too. I've been to a couple of those. They go, they went till one o'clock in the morning. Oh my wow. God. How do you keep people on that long? That's That's gotta be a killer. They really just focus on the board. The thing that sucked was they had a they had a really important motion that their that their uh, uh, transportation person had brought, who I know, um, and I go over there all the time. And one of the big reasons that I don't go more often is because there's no good transit connection and there's no good bike uh, uh, direction and the parking sucks. So um, I really was you know interested. There's a lot of businesses over there that I frequent and they buried the motion at like midnight knowing that it was the most like controversial motion on their agenda just so that they didn't have to listen to people and i was like i i had to work so eventually i had to i had to leave and i had to leave her my comment um but yeah they they didn't start hearing comments on their biggest agenda item until like midnight wow jason there's no rules about that keeping people on that long um, you know, uh, I've heard various things. Um, at first, uh, I heard that, that, uh, that if there, there was certain protocol that if our meetings go longer than four hours, then we have to do certain wow. things. But, uh, um, I, I know that not everybody is following the same exact rules. Okay. Well, we, uh, had, we had a marathon, if I recall, with the Bloomin, uh, Bloomfield project. <laughs> must, we had, been, we had must two back five back hours. Our meetings. We had two back to yeah. back. Okay, I'm and that was because you called it. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and start the meeting, even though we're missing uh, a couple of the people. But uh, hopefully, they'll chime in here pretty quick. Um, I just texted Kelly too to see where she is. Yeah, uh, my name is Reynold Blight. I'm the uh, chair of the uh, uh, Greater Toluca Lake uh, Governmental Affairs Committee, and I've been named the uh, chair of the uh, this special ad hoc committee. And uh, the purpose of our meeting tonight is to, uh, uh, it's a very specific uh, item having to do with the homeless. Um, there is a motion that's going before city council on uh, Tuesday. Uh, and uh, it's item 42. And uh, there's, it's on homelessness. And uh, then there's a substitute motion that has come up uh, and so we wanted to look at both motions and discuss whether we want to have a uh, uh, CIS uh, community impact statement uh, for Toluca Lake uh, ahead of that meeting on, on Tuesday. So the first thing we'll talk about as a committee is whether we want to have a, a CIS at all. And assuming that we do, uh, then we will uh, uh, discuss uh, to some extent, the uh, the motion and its uh, uh, the substitute, and I hope everyone, uh, all the members of the committee, have had a moment to uh, read both of those and have some idea of what they what they want to see. Um, in terms I'm of, public I'm sorry, Ryan, just I have a small correction. It was item 42 on the 1028 agenda. It's on the Tuesday agenda. It's item 24. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. For those who want to look it up, yeah, it's item 24 on the 10th. It, it was just posted a little while ago, the agenda. Okay, yeah, I missed that. So thanks for catching that. Um, good. Okay, uh, in terms of our uh, order of our meeting, uh, we will uh, have public comment uh, actually at the beginning here, and people will have two minutes to uh, speak on the topic. Um, and I see there are four hands raised. So uh, if we can go through those and, uh, and then the 
once once the public has had a chance to uh, discuss these things, then the committee itself will uh, uh, discuss the motion and uh, come up with the wording and uh, we will go forward and hopefully uh, it won't take too long. Um, Jason, you wanna go ahead and- Yeah, yeah I'll, go, I'll go through and um, uh, for all of the um, public comments, you'll have two minutes um, and I've seen the hands go up and I'm just gonna go through uh, in the order that the hands were raised. So uh, we'll start with uh, Jamie Penn, you are unmuted. Hi, um, just wanted to make a comment. I see this item um, on the agenda for discussion only. Um, I just heard y'all discussing whether or not to support or not support this. Um, I don't believe it's on the agenda to actually have an imp a community impact statement drafted for this. And I just wanted to make sure that that was brought to your attention. Um, also, I believe the president of city council just stated this will not be voted for on the 24th. Um, so I'm not quite sure how relevant this meeting is. Thank you. Okay, uh, next we have uh, Steve uh, Watch, looks like, or Street Watch, sorry, Street Watch. You are unmuted. Hi there, um, thank you, Jason. I, uh, I'm a member of Street Watch, a homelessness advocacy organization. I just wanted to let you know that uh, Nuri Martinez announced this is not going to be voted on. The reason for that is that every single homelessness advocacy organization in the city of Los Angeles stepped up to speak out against this because it's a deeply, deeply cruel and unusual motion. Um, some of you might be familiar with the case Martin v. Boise. It was a Supreme Court situation where the Supreme Court struck down laws like this because they're premised on the idea that there is shelter available to folks. The reality is we have about 10,000 shelter beds in Los Angeles for 60,000 people who are uh, unsheltered. It is right now impossible to shelter every person. So this motion is basically saying you can't sleep in public, you can't seek shelter under a freeway when it's raining or when it's 120 degrees out, but we don't have anywhere to actually house you. And it also, you, it also still proposes arresting people who do that. So uh, I just want to repeat that this was struck down by the Supreme Court when uh, Boise tried it as cruel and unusual punishment. Uh, it has been opposed by every single homelessness advocacy organization here. Uh, Bonin's substitute motion is a much better option. I honestly recommend you oppose this altogether because it is really, I mean, it, if you read the text of it, it is one of the most blatantly cruel attempts to criminalize poverty I've ever seen in my life as an advocate. Uh, so I just hope you make the right decision here. This is not being voted on. Uh, a bunch of neighborhood councils in the past week have spoken out against this as well because they realize it's absolutely cruel and unusual. And I really hope that if you do draft a CIS, because there is still a council file, that you oppose this altogether or you support the proposed substitute motion. I would just make sure you really read carefully when it comes to uh, the Mike Fewer ordinance and the original Buscano Bloomingfield motion. Um, like I said, it is not good. And uh, I, I'm sure you all have it in your hearts to understand why it's unfair to arrest people for not having shelter when we don't have any shelter to put them in in the first place. Um, I yield my time. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and next we have uh, Tess. Um, you are unmuted, Tess. Hi, thanks, Jason. Um, will this be my only opportunity to talk, or is it just public comment? Then you guys discuss, vote, and we're done. How yeah. Does work? Yes. Uh, tonight okay. it's is yes because it's just a single item. Okay. Um, well, yeah. I mean, it, so I, I I'm not in favor of that particularly because I I want to hear what's being discussed so that I can weigh in. Um, and it would be great if we could have some back and forth. So there's no back and forth tonight at all. And I'm, and I'm not looking for a huge debate. I just want to understand where people are before I just, you know, before I jump in further. And is it possible for you to 
change the view so that people know who else is on and that we have a chat function. For example, the street watch person who just spoke, I'd love to know her name and I would love to get a link to the, the, the Supreme Court um, item that she just referenced. And I, so I'm, I'm, I'm com my hands are tied. I don't know who she is. I can't reach her. I don't know her name and she has information I would love to get from her. Can you please make the view uh, uh, available so that we can see who else is on the meeting and chat with them? That would be terrific. Um, on uh, regarding the chat, um, that's a set of two things. If I'm not mistaken, that's a setting that that is um, that if I change any of the settings on here, I don't think I can change any of the settings in, during the meeting, but even if uh, I'm able to, um, the uh, Freddie at the Department of Neighborhood uh, Empowerment set up all of our features. And one of the reasons why they uh, disabled the chat was because that was uh, uh, something that was difficult to record for the minutes and uh, making sure there wasn't conversations or discussions that were happening that everybody wasn't included on or being able to see. And some of the people that are on the phone um, aren't able to see what's in the chat um, that, that called in. So that was, that's the reason why that was uh, set up that way. Um, Lisa, I uh, saw your hand up next. Uh, Lisa uh, Redmond. Yeah, hi, good evening, everyone. Um, first, I'm gonna address T Tess who just spoke. Tess, it's easy to look up. It's called Martin v. Boise. It was decided by the Ninth Circuit Court and it affects the nine Western states of the United States. It's pretty infamous and I think you can find it uh, easily. Just simple Google search. Uh, I'm calling to ask you very much to oppose the CIS uh, and really consider Mike Bonin's alternate um, motion instead. It's just, from what uh, Olga and others said earlier, it's just blatantly cruel to criminalize people for not having a place to sleep when there isn't a home for them to go to. There's, I've lost my train of thought, excuse me. Um, you know, the, a lot of this is based on the Judge Carter LA Alliance lawsuit right now and even Judge Carter at the last hearing, which was two weeks ago yesterday, um, Councilman Buscaino, who is pushing this motion, went and said to the judge, hey, we need uh, some kind of consequences. And the judge right there was saying, this is never gonna fly to begin with. You can't have consequences without the housing. And he just kept saying, get me the housing and then we'll consider consequences. So you can't arrest people for not having a place to sleep if there's not a place for people to sleep. You know, there are 60,000 homeless people in uh, Los Angeles County and uh, there's like what, 20,000 shelter beds, probably even way less. Um, we're gonna need to build, plus there's hundreds and thousands and thousands of people that are going to be most likely uh, without homes and unhoused very shortly because of the economic crisis that we're experiencing with this pandemic, who once moratoriums of rent are going to be lifted and job losses are going to be homeless too. The city is about to see an incredible tsunami of uh, homelessness in addition to what's already happening. Um, this motion also, if we criminalize people, it doesn't really help in the sense of not only is there not housing, but it just shuffles people around and it's going to take them from places that uh, nobody wants to see them because they are highly visible like under freeway overpasses, but it's only going to put, because they won't be allowed to sleep there, it's gonna push people further and deeper into residential neighborhoods, which nobody wants as well. I really appreciate that you also have an ad hoc committee on um, homelessness, but I would really suggest that you do call it a homelessness committee not homeless, because I think you're here to work on the social issue, not the people and individuals. Uh, words really matter, and I hope you will take that under consideration as well. Thank you for um, your consideration and your time this evening. Thank you, Lisa. Next, I see uh, Peter Kloon. Hi, yeah, can you hear me? Yes. 
Thanks. Um, yeah, so I'd uh, you know, like to echo what some of the previous callers have said um, and ask you to please oppose this motion um, as put forward by Councilmember Buscaino. Um, instead, please support the substitute motion um, put forward by Mike Bonin. Um, as other people mentioned, you know, the city council themselves has decided not to debate this on the agenda on November 24th. Um, and they, because they've received overwhelming feedback um, so far that you know, criminalization is not the answer to housing issues facing our city. Um, you know, as people mentioned with Martin v. Boise, this is really a continuation of the terrible and failed policies that have gotten us where we are. Um, and is, it will just serve to be a cruel, inhumane, and ultimately horribly ineffective. Um, you know, the text of the motion is, is pretty startling. Um, banning sitting, lying, or sleeping within 500 feet of any public area, which covers the entire city, um, so long as an offer of shelter is made. But as the previous caller mentioned, we don't have that shelter in Los Angeles. Um, we, we lack the beds um, and it, it, it simply can't be done. But as this motion's written, it doesn't require there be a bed, just that an offer is made. Um, I'd also like to just quickly head off a few arguments that often pop up when you hear this conversation. Um, you know, one is that sort of ongoing lawsuits in the city would prevent this from going into effect and really affecting people. Um, but the city has already been held in contempt for violating court orders um, as recently as September. Um, in regards to illegal, performing illegal sweeps um, and taking property from our unhoused neighbors. Um, you know, the pattern we've seen in Los Angeles is that if you give the power to criminalize people, it's going to be used. Um, so I ask you to sort of keep that in mind as you think about this. Um, you know, also, you know, you often hear concerns about, you know, ADA accessibility um, and sanitation. Um, and I'd urge you really not to fall into the trap of that false binary. Um, that we either need to have criminalization or sort of clean streets, right? We can provide services, bathrooms, trash pickup. We can do those things without bringing in police, without arresting people, without turning them into criminals simply because they are poor. Um, you know, there are programs being put in place now that empower our unhoused neighbors to handle ADA issues themsel themselves. Um, and to be clear, oftentimes they are the ones who are most in need of that, the, that ADA protection and consideration. Um, and, you know, and just to sort of wrap it up, you know, we need our solutions um, and criminalization is not that. Nowhere in this original motion is you know, real, any progress towards filling those housing gaps that we have in our city addressed at all. Um, and if, where if you look at Mike Bonin's motion, it is all about finding ways to get people into housing. And that is the only way that we can actually address this problem fundamentally, um, just finding ways to arrest people, sort of push them out of sight, um, will do, we'll do really nothing. Um, and especially in the middle of a pandemic uh, is just a terrible policy for our city to pursue. Um, so again, I, I really urge you, you know, please oppose this motion um, and instead support the substitute motion put forward by Mike Bonner. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Um, next, uh, Rudy uh, Melendez. Thank you, Peter. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, I just wanted to point out that was the longest two minutes I've uh, heard in a while. Um, you know, we all empathize with the homeless situation. Um, it's not semantics. These people need shelter. Uh, let's point out a couple of things. Most of the people that are here in the meeting making public comment tonight uh, don't live in our neighborhood. Um, they make the rounds in these meetings advocating and making good arguments and quite frankly and I, I believe a lot of the things that they're saying but the truth of the matter is they don't live in this neighborhood they don't even know who our city councilor is um, we just simply want uh, public works to come in and clean up we're not advocating to sweep these people off the street as community members that live in this neighborhood we want public works to come in and provide the most basic essential services for these people which they're not doing Let's be clear, LASA did the homeless count back in January. It took six months to release the figures. And here we are in the middle of November, still talking about the shortage of shelter beds. The real point, the real issue is there's not enough shelter beds and these people that are making the rounds in these community meetings need to be holding our elected officials accountable, not stifling some effort to keep our community clean and safe and free from disease and, and offering the sanitation that we are paying for as taxpayers in this city. 
We just simply want our community to be properly maintained. We want to see that these people get the essential services they need. And what we don't see is the city's ability to even provide a hand washing station or a portable bathroom and properly maintain it. It's ridiculous. That's the real issue. There's a shortage of shelter beds. And if everybody was here in this meeting making public comment, we'll hold our elected officials accountable at the city and the county to make those beds available. We wouldn't be here on a Friday night. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rudy. Uh, next, uh, Kevin V. Uh, you are unmuted. Thank you. Hi, um, my name is Kevin, and I am a stakeholder. And I'd like to just uh, remind the previous caller and anybody else who may be listening that um, the unhoused residents uh, in this neighborhood are also stakeholders, as well as the volunteers who help support them from uh, uh, violent sweeps by the city uh, from violent policies such as the one being proposed here. Um, so, you know, everybody who volunteers against these things and is able to uh, support the unhoused community in this neighborhood is in fact a stakeholder, uh, regardless of where they live. Um, I also want to just reiterate the previous caller's points regarding, oh, is Rudy still unmuted? Interesting. Um, yeah, I'd like to reiterate the other caller's points regarding uh, just the sheer cruelty of this this motion. Um, and I think you guys know that it's, uh, you know, not being voted on this Tuesday, but I would just like to uh, draw your attention to servicesnotsweeps.com. And there's a really handy website that has an interactive, uh, sorry, there's a really handy interactive map on this website uh, where it shows uh, all over Los Angeles, this, the spaces in which homelessness would be criminalized under this motion uh, based on that 500 foot buffer zone area. So uh, if you look at the map, it's just, a, it's, it's just landmines all over the city of Los Angeles intended to make the lives of unhoused people even more miserable. Um, and so, yeah, it's, I think it's uh, really important that uh, not only that this body uh, oppose this motion, but that you understand why. Um, so I'm going to yield the rest of my time. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Next, we have uh, Stacy Dawson Stern. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you so much for, for having me. I just wanna make a public comment here. Um, my name is Stacey Dawson Stearns. I wanna make it very clear that I am not affiliated with any um, specific organization. There's a caller that two callers ago who seems to think there's a monolithic being out here who like in some strange and bizarre fashion um, is united in wanting to tear down any rules that criminalize homelessness. And that's not true. There's not a monolith that wants to do that. There are people who are human still. So I'm appealing to this body to remember that you are human beings on a neighborhood council, okay? I want you to ask yourselves why all of a sudden Joe Buscaino and Bob Blumenfield are infiltrating your neighborhood councils with a sort of a summons to perform a community impact statement. Guess what? You don't have to. And I wanna just remind you, I wanna ask you, has, is anyone here, has anyone here actually read the ordinance? Have you read all of the council files that are under, um, I, I'm not looking at my notes because I'm looking at you, even though I can't see you, I'm staring at my computer, but uh, 4118, um, you know what I'm talking about, the ordinance and then the council file that goes with it. You all have it on your agenda and you're in a neighborhood council, okay? And if you have not studied those documents and performed a background check on the recent happenings around those objects, then you have absolutely no stake in this, you don't know what you're talking about and you're about to be played off as tools. So I, whatever you think about the unhoused, that's your dirty business or clean business. There's only two ways to slice it. You either care about humanity or you don't. That's not, I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to tell you if you haven't studied the documents and you don't know what's going on, stop and ask yourselves, why are we being courted, bullied and intimidated? We are being offered 
lots of information to create community impact statements about how we support something that we've never even read. Stop there. Don't be a statistic. Look around, do your research. There's a whole suite going on. It's not just of homeless encampments, it's of neighborhood councils and you're being played for fools because these people in city council don't show up to court your opinion when it's ever something that you really need. Think about it. You move the homeless, or the, the unhoused people. Final thought, Stacey. Final thought, you move the unhoused folks, our neighbors, human beings out from underpasses, guess where they are? Your goddamn front yard. And if you don't start caring about human beings when, when you have stuff, you guys protecting your neighborhood, protect your neighborhood in a bigger way, protect your neighbors. They happen to be unhoused. I hope you never experience that. Sorry, thank you, Stacey. Uh, Damon. You're unmuted. Yeah, hi, thank you. Um, wow, really, really awesome um, comments from everyone, super informative, um, except for that Rudy guy, he sucked. I think he lost to Kerkorian by like 50 points in the election. So maybe his thoughts on things aren't so popular with people in the, in the district. Um, let me just say, um, I don't know how much you guys have followed this in city, at the city council, city hall, but the, the way that the city council tried to push this through was really unprecedented. Um, the motion was made and within a week, the ordinance was up and, and you, we all know how long it takes everything in LA to move. They tried to, to speed run this through. Then in the uh, council meeting, they intentionally split it off into a separate special agenda item so that people like us who wanted to you know, give public comment had to wait four hours because they were trying to suppress public comment. And then it was only 30 minutes. And now this, this thing is so unpopular, it got pulled from the agenda. Um, as, the, uh, as previous callers have said, every single homelessness activist organization in the city is vehemently against this. Um, at the city council meeting where it was first brought up, Bonin correctly pointed out, this whole thing is predicated on a lie that there is shelter available. There is not, we know this. Uh, Coretz, council member Coretz pointed out that this doesn't do anything. All it does is shuffle people 500 feet into your neighborhood. And uh, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think people who are in favor of moving the homeless want them moving onto your front yard. Um, De Leon, uh, council member De Leon also noted, this is the exact same failed policy that has mired the city in, in lawsuits for years. It's just, it's just a failed, proven failed policy idea. So I really, really hope you guys um, oppose this. The unhoused people are your neighbors too. They're the ones you should be most looking after, not the ones you should be tormenting. I really hope you oppose this. And I just want to say thank you to all the other callers who've called in with really informative um, points. Thank you very much, I yield my time. Thank you, Damon. Uh, next we have uh, Nancy uh, Linari. Nancy, you are- Hi, um, Hi I'm sorry, I had to unmute. Um, I have tried to read through these motions, so I will say that I did not see them until earlier today, so I'm not as familiar with them as most of the people on this call, but I am a resident who lives half a block, not even a block from underpasses and moving them from the underpass isn't gonna get them in my front yard because they're already in my front yard. They've been on my front porch in the middle of the night having arguments and I've had to call the police. The people across the street from me have had their apartments broken into so that people can use their toilet and try to get onto their computers. I have, I don't wanna be accused of having no respect or concern for humanity but I also have respect and concern for my own neighborhood and my own safety. There are streets I can no longer walk down because of the trash and the number of people living on the street. I, can't, uh, I have, I think, seven men living about 100 yards from my front door right now. It is not a safe place for me or my kids to walk. I don't want these people to be hurt further, but I also have some rights as a citizen to have my own safety and well-being.
taken care of. So they don't have rights, even though they're citizens. Got it. You know what? I'm trying. Sorry, that... I'm trying to give you my opinion. I don't remember. I didn't interrupt or try to interrupt anyone else when they gave their opinion. I'm not saying they don't have rights, but I'm saying I also have rights and concerns. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, next, we have uh, Katie. You are unmuted. Hello there. I am Nancy's neighbor as well. And I also want to respond to what Stacy and Damon said. These folks are already in the front yard. One man was urinating right next to my door. In a separate incident, a man was passed out on my front yard where I had to call the police to see if he was even alive. So I believe in humanity. I voted to have my taxes raised so that more homeless shelters could be built. But it is not fair what Nancy and I and other individuals who live next to overpasses have to endure. And I don't understand the difference in how the laws are interpreted in that I had a friend who parked next to my house under a no parking sign, clearly was in violation of that, no argument there. But the individuals who are down the street from us have three to four, if not more, depending on the day, trucks and campers parked directly under a no parking sign. So is that, are there different rules for those individuals than for, than for us? I just think that we have to be concerned for the folks who live next to these overpasses. It's a different world that someone like Nancy and I encounter than other folks. We have a right to be upset about this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Katie. Um, next, I see uh, Jessica J. Jessica J, you are unmuted. Hi, so I just wanna say, um, I'm a stakeholder here. I work right, right off of Moore Park. Um, you know, for me, it's very hard to hear people who are calling it in as concerned neighbors talk about how inconvenienced they are, talk about how scared they are, talk about how they fear for their safety. You know, this is a very troubling year. I wish a lot of people who are calling in would be thankful for the roof over their head, for their food on their table. How inconvenienced, well, how, actually how privileged should your life be? where you have the ability to take on other people's pain and inconveniences. You guys have a very nice life. People are homeless. Um, your elected officials have not done the work. Um, don't take your anger out on them. And also don't call police on people who are having medical emergencies. We have EMTs. Do not let people with guns show up to kill people who are homeless. Uh, just take advantage of your privileges. You guys sound like you have nice, comfortable lives where just seeing someone is disruptive. Imagine what it's like to live outside, to sleep outside, to look for food, to not have a bathroom, to not have access to food or healthcare, and be thankful for what you have. Push your elected officials, not your volunteer NC officials, to do the work and stop taking your anger out and sending cops with guns to deal with this. This is not a, a crime, crime issue, it's a human rights issue. And enjoy your privileges, enjoy your kids, enjoy your nice white neighborhoods, but remember you're all on the stolen land anyway. It's not even yours to claim. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. And last, we have uh, Lawrence. Lawrence M., you are allowed to talk. Hey, thanks. So, you know, I, I did want to encourage you all not to, oh, thank you for having me, first of all. I wanted to encourage you to not make a CIS, um, however, after hearing Nancy and Katie's public comment, I just wanted to respond with, you know, the absolute fact that, you know, if police don't kill people experiencing homelessness, um, they take them away and, and they don't just disappear into a hole, right? Like they're put into these places that have incredibly dehumanizing conditions and people who are locked up are subject to 
physical, violent physical and sexual abuse uh, in, in these compounds. And, and it's very difficult for me to hear Rudy earlier say, I empathize with the homeless, but, right? Like anything that comes before the but is automatically null and void. Um, yeah, it's very hard to hear all of this and hear this kind of talk about how dangerous people experiencing homelessness are when I just heard earlier that it's important to hold politicians accountable. Um, which we should, because what is happening is a form of organized abandonment. You know, Los Angeles dedicated over half of the city's budget to police. And the thing is, they haven't gotten any better at, you know, helping to alleviate homelessness. Um, so I just wanted to add that to the rest of that and ask you to consider what happens when somebody gets arrested if they don't get killed. Thank you. Thank you, Lawrence. And then uh, David uh, W, you have, you are unmuted. Hello. Hi. You, uh, can you, you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, great, thank you. Hi, yeah, this is uh, David Wheatley. I live in Silver Lake, but I'm a stakeholder also in Toluca Lake. I got on a bit late, so I'm a little bit uninformed. But um, I know that the term public right of way means streets and sidewalks and maybe some other ways where um, people, any member of the public can go. Uh, I think that does not mean that any men, member of the public can just go and stay there. I think the moves for, uh, to let people camp on public right of ways was a mistake. Also, we've put, um, it's just a little distressing to me. Maybe I'm a privileged guy myself. I probably am to be hearing the extreme left uh, with their violent words, Stacy uh, being so contemptuous of other people. I really think that's appalling. And uh, she has no standing really. Anybody who talks like that is really, really offensive. And I think it's not constructive. So I think that, um, I think that homeless people being asked or required, and if not required, to um, to respect the rights of other people, private property, stay off private property, is good. I support that, and I support the neighborhood private property council. is bad, and I think the person who just talked should be banned from the meeting, as well as the other person who interrupted. You just need to be really quiet it's and be really, and you and you need to that lady who just spoke needs to be banned from the meeting as well, because both of them did not have the courtesy or respect required to participate a stab in, in, on society. In, in, in a meeting like this. And Jason, could you please mute that person and kick them out of the meeting? And um, so, yeah, I think this is what we're dealing with. The homeless unhoused representatives who are here tonight are like way out of control. And I think uh, they need to uh, go somewhere else. So that's it, thanks. Okay, thank you so much. Um... Let me just, uh, let's see, okay. Um, there is one more, uh, and this is our last uh, Cadillac. Uh, Z, you are unmuted. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, yeah, I was just um, <clears throat> calling in to tell you, I, I hope you guys oppose this. Um, I, I've, I've you know, heard all the other callers who've made really great points. And, you know, some of the NIMBYs who called in, especially like David, that last douche who called in talking about the extreme left. David, turn off Fox News, bud. Um, I just want to say the people who've called in to complain, this motion is not going to it's not going to do anything like this doesn't provide more housing, which is what's needed. It doesn't provide any services for the unhoused people in your community. All it does is give police another reason to brutalize these people. So when they call in and say, I, I, you know, it's not fair. It's not fair that you're calling me heartless. I, I do have a heart. I just don't want them near me. No, you don't have a heart. You want them to be punished and thrown in jail. That's, that's all this does. That's the only purpose of this entire motion is to 
penalize poverty and homelessness. And if you don't like them being on the sidewalk, instead of complaining and wanting to put them in jail, you guys, you NIMBYs, should be focused on pressuring your council member to provide more housing. That's the solution, okay? That, that's the solution, permanent housing for these people, not punishment. So, you know, forgive me, the people with this, the, the sob stories, give me a break. You guys are monsters. You deal with that on your own. Thank you, I yield my time. Thank you, and that concludes public comment. Ren. Um... You can take over, Ren. There we go. Uh, let me go back to uh, what I said at the beginning. Uh, this committee was set up to uh, make a decision about whether we want to do a community action statement, community impact statement. Um, and uh, if we do, then whether we want to support the uh, original motion or the uh, Bonin substitute motion. Uh, so uh, let's start, if we will, on a discussion about uh, do we want to do a CIS on this issue? Um, uh, Robert, you want to speak first, please? Hannah has a hand up. Hannah, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Hannah, no, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, no, I think, I, I do think we should do a CIS on, on this issue. This is, this is a really, I think, important council file for a lot of reasons, uh, not least of which is because of, of Boise versus Martin and, and the question of constitutionality with the motion. Um, you know, I think it's important that this neighborhood council take a stand on, on issues like this, um, especially when they are so dramatically affecting the city and, and are probably only going to get worse. Uh, because of COVID, I think it's really important that that we make a that we make a statement, especially as a as a as a community that acknowledges that we are, you know, rel a relatively privileged community. Our, our makeup is, relatively speaking, um, um, and I, I, I think I think our voice is really important in this conversation, and, and we should make a statement. Okay, thank you, uh, Jason. Do you want to speak up on this? Um, I would, uh, I do think we should also put together a CIS um, in, um, for the main reason this is such an inc incredibly important topic. Um, and I think that we should have a, a, a voice in the conversation. Um, I would be um, a fan of uh, supporting the substitute motion. Um, that that's, that's where my, uh, my feelings are at this time, but i um, happy to kind of go in a little bit deeper and have more of a conversation specifically about that. But um, that, that's, that's what my thoughts are right now. Quickly, I, okay. I that as well. Uh, Bob? Uh, yeah, I also support submitting a CIS. I think it makes a statement as to where the community stands on this matter. I also agree with a lot of the public comments that were made about the original motion. It's uh, draconian, and so I, I strongly oppose the original motion, and I support the uh, Bonnet Rule motion. And I want to thank the public for their many, many uh, very good points. Uh, obviously, a lot of people have done a lot of research into this matter. Uh, there is a lawsuit, and I, I'm supposing that's why the city council has to react to it. And I very much oppose the original and in support of the substitute. Okay, well, I, uh, <laughs> I'm in keeping with that as well. So it sounds like we've got a, a, uh, a consensus on this, A, that we want to do a CIS, and B, that we wanted to uh, support the substitute motion and not the original. Yeah. Uh, so uh, <laughs> just as an aside, uh, some people have talked about us like we... Uh, we don't know what we're talking about. We haven't been involved in this and so forth. And that's just not true. Our neighborhood council has been involved with this issue uh, for a long time in a variety of ways. Uh, we have a uh, uh, position paper that we put together a year and a half ago, two years ago now. And uh, so we've been involved in this and, and kept keeping up with the 
the issues. So, uh, you know, people are welcome to attend our meetings and speak up and they have along the way. And, uh, you know, we appreciate the input for the most part. <laughs> Some of it's, uh, you know, it's just uh, off the cuff, a reactionary kind of thing from people who don't know what they're involved in or talking about. And that's, you know, that's kind of sad. But for the most part, having people, you know, discuss the issue and, and talk about it and get hear from the other side, even if they don't like what they're hearing, uh, lets them know what, uh, you know, what we kind of have to deal with at, at the neighborhood level when we try to come up with a position for the neighborhood, for the community. Um, so anyway, let's go to a vote. Um, uh, the motion I hear is that uh, we will create a CIS on this issue and uh, that we will support the uh, uh, substitute motion rather than the initial motion. Um, Ren, if I, if I may, I, I sure. just uh, had a moment to, to send or share. There, there is a community impact statement that has been uh, previously written and passed by a number of other councils that uh, opposes the original council file and supports the proposed bone in motion. So I don't know if we want to use that might make writing up language for our neighborhood a bit easier if we want to use that. Yeah, frankly, I was about to <laughs> suggest that as our next step. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, right, I'll let you. I'll let you. I have a comment. If I'll follow you. Uh, anyway, the the uh, yeah the the language that I've basically taken from uh, a couple of other councils. Um, This would be uh, uh, council file number 20-1376, uh, agenda date. Uh, we'll have to check if, they, uh, if they've if they moved it from the 24th, we'll have to uh, plug in the new date. Uh, the item number, as uh, Bob said, it's item 24, I guess, at this point. On the agenda, yes. And uh, our impact statement would be our our statement would be uh, the Greater Toluca Lake Neighborhood Council opposes the original motion for this council file and supports the substitute motion presented by Mike Bonin and David Rue. Um, does anyone have any changes or additions or? No, you, you took the words out of my mouth. Hannah, I felt that that very long uh, CIS, just these, these folks know exactly what the issues are. There really is no tense to go over it. It's just a simple paragraph that Ren just read, which would make the council aware of where we stand. Sounds good. Yeah. yeah. So I wouldn't use that form if I can say. Yeah. Okay. If that language is acceptable, um, I hear no further changes or objections. Uh, uh, we will assume that that's what we're going to do um, and we'll adjourn the meeting. Before that, I just want to mention that uh, uh, Councilman Rue has been uh, voted out of his office and, uh, and uh, Councilwoman uh, Rahman will show up and be our, uh, uh, our representative. And I got to start getting used to saying council person. <laughs> anyway, I'm old school. But I think, uh, you know, we're, uh, I, don't, I don't think there'll be any kind of change in policy from, from that in terms of uh, the homeless population. If anything, I think the council person, uh, Raman, will be even more uh, aggressive, if you will, in trying to get this problem dealt with. So I think that's a good sign. And I, I just would love to add as well, because I know there were some questions about stakeholdership and we do represent people who live here and don't live here, but just really quickly so we know, she, she is a very progressive uh, uh, advocate in terms of homelessness and she actually did win our neighborhood council district. So as we're taking public, uh, public opinion into, into account, um, the, the, our district actually did vote uh, in Raman's direction in terms of raw, raw data, uh, number, numbers and data. Uh, Jason, are you uh, prepared now to call a meeting for Monday, or do you want? Yeah, to yes, yeah. So, so um, 
uh, if you want to, if you're able to send me that and we can um, put together the agenda for Monday night, then uh, seven o'clock. Good. Okay. Will do. With that, the uh, meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for uh, participating and uh, being part of our discussion. Good night. Thanks, Thank Rand. You.